ghouls, monsters, werewolves, and vampires. The horror genre has been a staple of popular culture through the centuries. In 1897, author Bram Stoker terrified readers with his blood-curdling novel, Dracula, establishing many of the conventions of vampire lore that exist across media today. Count Dracula would be portrayed many times in cinema in the following century, perhaps most famously by Bela Lugosi in Universal Pictures' 1931 adaption, and by Christopher Lee in the Hammer Dracula films a few decades later. Vampires and other creatures of the night have since become mainstays in movies, television, and novels, infecting our culture with tales of the undead and horrors from beyond the grave. However, up until 1986, the horror genre was all but dead in one form of media. It's alive! Video games had just made a resurgence with the release of the Nintendo Entertainment System a year earlier, and gamers the world over had become enamored with the colorful worlds of games like Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. However, in September of that year, a game would be released in Japan that took a darker turn, a game that would raise the horror genre from the crypt and establish the conventions of future games to come. Castlevania was developed by Konami and directed by Hitoshi Akamatsu for the Famicom Disk System in 1986. Taking inspiration from classic universal horror films such as Dracula, as well as the Hammer horror films, Akamatsu approached the development of Castlevania with a film director's eye, wanting to create a game from a more cinematic perspective. The game's North American release date of May 1st, 1987 coincided with the 90th anniversary of Bram Stoker's Dracula. In the game, the player controls Simon Belmont as he traverses through the many stages of Dracula's castle to defeat the Count himself. Along the way, Simon faces other classic monsters such as Frankenstein, Medusa, and the Grim Reaper. Simon's main weapon, the Whip, was inspired by Akamatsu's love of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Today, Castlevania is notorious for its difficulty. Simon can jump, crouch, and walk upstairs, but moves at a moderately slow pace, which is often outpaced by the enemies in the game. Furthermore, there is a slight delay after hitting the button to attack, and Simon can only utilize his whip in one direction, straight forward. Often, enemies are placed out of the whip's reach, and at very inconvenient times such as jumping across a pit to another platform or walking upstairs. However, perhaps the most unforgiving element is the knockback. Anytime Simon is hit by an enemy, he is thrown backward, often resulting in him knocking into an enemy and falling down stairs or pits. Despite its difficulty, Castlevania proved to be a unique and engaging experience. The level design featured classic horror aesthetics such as candles, skulls, and creepy backgrounds. In addition to his whip, Simon can collect other weapons such as an axe, knife, cross, and holy water, and collect hearts to refill his magic gauge. Additionally, pork chops can be found to restore health, often hidden inside walls. These features would become staples of the series. However, perhaps the most immersive aspect of the game is the haunting score composed by Kinuyu Yamashita and Seto Terashima. Castlevania's haunting melodies helped to create a creepy, foreboding atmosphere, and created the feeling of being in a real horror movie. The end credits of the game only further emphasize this, with the staff role featuring pseudonames of classic horror movie actors such as Boris Karloff, Christopher Lee, and Bela Lugosi. Castlevania proved to be successful upon its release, and has since received widespread critical acclaim. It is often regarded as unique with almost universal praise for its atmosphere and music, and for setting the standard for horror games. A slightly altered version of the game, titled Vampire Killer, would release that same year in Japan and in Europe for the MSX2. Featuring largely the same mechanics, music, and settings, it would feature flip screens as opposed to the NES's scrolling levels due to technical restraints. In addition, the player would be required to collect skeleton keys to open new levels and treasure chests. With the success of Castlevania, Konami naturally set to work on creating a sequel, with Akamatsu back on board to direct the project. 
Castlevania II, Simon's Quest, would be released a year later, and although the game featured platforming, scrolling levels, and the same creepy horror themes as the previous entry, the game designers decided to take a different approach to the gameplay. Simon's Quest features some RPG elements, such as the ability to purchase and upgrade weapons in a world map. The game also features a day and night cycle. Townspeople are about to help give clues to Simon during the day, but as night falls, the townspeople stay inside, and stronger enemies creep out of the darkness. The game takes place directly after the first Castlevania. Having defeated Dracula, a curse is put on Simon. In order to break the curse, Simon has to hunt for Dracula's five body parts and take them to the ruins of the Count's castle in order to defeat him once and for all. Although the game was released to positive reviews, it has since faced a lot of criticism. Common complaints include the simple boss fights, backtracking, and the game's poor translation, which made a lot of the clues that the NPCs in the game give cryptic at best. The most infamous of these being the following. There are parts in the game that are definitely not self-explanatory and are too hard to figure out. Take this dead end, for example. Would you guess that you're supposed to pass through this wall? How? You have to kneel down by it for like 10 seconds. Now still, that's not enough to make it so cryptic and hidden that we can't figure it out. Oh, please give us more for our buck and make it harder so we can wander around the whole game and exhaust every possibility before we find out. Okay, guess what? You need to have a red crystal selected and be kneeling down, and wait a little while before this magic tornado comes and takes you to the next part of the game. Despite these flaws, Simon's Quest still received praise for its atmosphere, exploration, and its soundtrack, this time composed by Kenichi Matsubara. Although it didn't sell as well as the first entry, Simon's Quest is still regarded as a classic title for the NES. Following Simon's Quest in Japan, although being released a few months earlier than the game in North America and Europe, Haunted Castle, an arcade game developed by Konami, would be released in 1988. Despite Castlevania being absent from its title, the game still featured Simon Belmont, this time on a quest to save his wife Serena from Dracula. The game featured the same elements of the first Castlevania, being a platform game with six levels. Simon again utilizes his whip, as well as an array of other sub-weapons such as crosses, torches, and boomerangs. The graphics received a notable upgrade, and the soundtrack was again composed by Matsubara, featuring classic Castlevania tracks such as Bloody Tears. Although a third entry to the series was in development for the NES, the next game to release would be Castlevania The Adventure for the Game Boy in 1989. This would mark the first handheld title for the series, and also be the first title not to star Simon Belmont. Instead, the game would take place a century before Simon's adventures, and star his ancestor, Christopher Belmont, as he quests to defeat Dracula. This would also be the first game in the series to not feature Akamatsu as director, with Masada Megawa and Yoshiaki Yamada directing the project. The game was also notable for completely dropping sub-weapons and featuring only four, albeit long, stages. Although the game received relatively average reviews, it sold well and was the first Game Boy title to sell almost 2.5 million copies. For the third and final game for the NES, Akamatsu would once again take the series in a different direction. Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse would release a year after Simon's Quest, and be the first game in the series to feature multiple playable characters. The game is set canonically as a prequel to the original Castlevania, and harkens back to the series' roots, dropping the RPG and action elements of Simon's Quest. The game would, however, incorporate a non-linear style, with different paths for the player to take leading to different endings. The game would serve as another prequel to the original Castlevania, featuring Trevor Belmont as the main protagonist, an ancestor of Simon's. Three support characters, all with different abilities, are also playable. Sypha, a sorceress who can wield magic, Grant, a pirate who can scale walls and throw daggers, and Alucard, Dracula's son, who can throw fireballs and turn into a bat. When hitting the select button, Trevor can transform into another character and utilize their moves, but can only take one companion at a time with him. Dracula's Curse's legacy has proved it to be perhaps the most engaging, ambitious, and challenging Castlevania title on the NES but despite its acclaim, also sold less than expected. This unfortunately led to Akamatsu being demoted and ultimately resigning from Konami, marking the last time he would direct a Castlevania game. A second Castlevania game would be released for the Game Boy in 1991. Castlevania II, Belmont's Revenge, once again featured Christopher Belmont, who sets out on a quest to confront Dracula after he kidnaps his son Seleu and turns him into a demon. Many critics saw Belmont's Revenge as an improvement from its predecessor, bringing back sub-weapons such as the Axe and Holy Water. Belmont's Revenge is often regarded as the best Castlevania title for the original Game Boy, and one of the best handheld titles of the series. With the launch of the Super Nintendo, a whole new generation of gaming would be born. 
Featuring superior graphics, sound, and hardware capabilities, Nintendo's newest console would naturally incentivize Konami to create new games for the system. Castlevania would once again rise from the darkness and onto this new 16-bit landscape with 1991's Super Castlevania IV. This time, Masahiro Yuno would direct the project, wanting to create an action platformer title closer in line with the original Castlevania. Every 100 years, when the power of good is weakened, Dracula rises in the night with his demon army, and it's once again up to Simon Belmont to defeat him. Despite the plot largely being the same as the original Castlevania, the game is not considered a remake, as it contains many new stages, enemies, and music. The graphics would receive a noticeable upgrade, and several new mechanics would be added to the game. Super Castlevania IV's graphics are some of the most impressive of the time, featuring very detailed sprites and backgrounds, providing a creepier tone to that of its predecessors. Super Castlevania IV was also one of the very first games to utilize the Super Nintendo's Mode 7, most notably in Stage 4 with a full rotating 3D background. Although the mechanics are largely the same as previous entries in the series, there are some decided improvements. Simon can now utilize his whip in eight different directions, including holding it out in front of him for defense. His jump can now also be controlled slightly in midair, giving the player an opportunity to dodge enemies and attacks. Simon can also collect sub-weapons, collecting hearts to replenish his magic and pork chops for health. Despite all of these upgrades, perhaps Super Castlevania IV's greatest strength is in its soundtrack. This time composed by Masanori Adachi and Taro Kudo, Super Castlevania IV really set a new atmosphere of its own, with an almost totally original score, including the now famous theme of Simon, as well as the impressive jazziness of the submerged city. Three classic NES tracks, Vampire Killer from the first game, Bloody Tears from Simon's Quest, and Beginning from Dracula's Curse also received new remixes, adding to the creepy yet adventurous score. Super Castlevania IV was released to critical acclaim, and is still considered by many to be one of the greatest games of the series. Its creepy atmosphere, enhanced by the Super NES's upgraded graphics and sound, really established a new standard for the series. Its varied levels and impressive sprite design evoked feelings of horror, dread, and adventure like no other before it. Two Castlevania titles would be released exclusively in Japan in 1993. The first, Akumajo Dracula, or simply Castlevania as it is known in the West, would be released on the Sharp X68000 home computer. Based on the original Castlevania, this new title would feature redesigned stages of the first, as well as brand new stages with upgraded graphics and music. It would not see an English release until 2001, when it was enhanced and re-released for the Sony PlayStation as Castlevania Chronicles. The second title, Castlevania Rondo of Blood, would release exclusively in Japan for the PC Engine CD-ROM, also known as the TurboGrafx-16. Directed by Toru Hagihari, Rondo of Blood would incorporate many of the same gameplay elements as its predecessors, with more of a focus on exploration, with alternate hidden paths for the player to uncover. Rondo of Blood would also be the first game in the series to feature animated cutscenes and voice acting. The game stars Simon's descendant, Richter Belmont, who goes to Dracula's castle in order to save his lover, Annette, who has been kidnapped by the once again resurrected vampire. Along the way, Richter encounters and frees three other captured women, most notably a young girl named Maria, who becomes the secondary playable character. Maria can attack primarily with white doves, as well as a few other sub-weapons such as a white tiger kitten and music notes. The game was very well received in Japan, but would not see a Western release until years later. However, the game would receive a sort of remake or port for the Super Nintendo in 1995 as Castlevania Dracula X. Although featuring many of the same plot elements and graphics, it would feature different level designs, no cutscenes, and remove Maria as a playable character. Although the graphics and sound receive praise, Dracula X is widely considered a downgrade from both its Japanese counterpart and Super Castlevania IV with common criticisms including the game's notorious difficulty and less intuitive gameplay mechanics as opposed to Super Castlevania 4. The Super Nintendo wouldn't be the only 16-bit console to receive a Castlevania title. Castlevania Bloodlines would release for the Sega Genesis in 1994, and would be the sole Castlevania game released on the platform. Bloodlines features two playable characters, John Morris, who plays like the traditional Belmont character and carries a whip, and Eric Lacarde, wielding the Alucard Spear, who has a better attack range than John, only a bit weaker. After Drolta Zuentes resurrects Elizabeth Bartley with black magic, they travel across Europe in hopes of resurrecting Dracula. It's up to John and Eric, descendants of the Belmont clan, to stop them. Bloodline's plot would be the first of the series to actually tie into the story of Bram Stoker's original Dracula novel, with John Morris being the son of Quincy Morris, a character from the novel. This has led to many people considering the novel to be part of the actual series canon, which it is not. 
The game's setting is also different than its predecessors, featuring many locations across Europe, rather than just Dracula's castle. The game features traditional Castlevania gameplay with six linear stages and a boss at the end of each level. The soundtrack was the first Castlevania title composed by Michiru Yamain, who would go on to score several other prominent games in the series. Bloodlines has received critical acclaim and is noteworthy as being one of the most unique entries in the series. The third and final Castlevania for the Game Boy would be released in 1997. Starring the first female Belmont of the series' history, Sonya Belmont, Castlevania Legends sought to establish the origins of Dracula. Sonya Belmont is trained by her grandfather to use a magical whip. One night she encounters Dracula's son, Alucard, who has disavowed the evil deeds of his father. After her home is attacked by monsters who kills her grandfather, she travels across Transylvania to defeat Dracula. The gameplay is largely the same as the previous two entries for the Game Boy, only with sub-weapons removed and Sonya having the ability to crawl and utilize a burning mode that can increase her strength and speed. The game received moderate to mixed reviews and has since been taken out of the series' official canon. By 1997, the Castlevania series had established itself as the Dark Lord of horror games. Its creepy atmosphere, haunting yet catchy soundtrack, and fun and challenging gameplay made it really stand out among other games. For over a decade, the series would reign supreme over the action platform genre, bringing with each entry of the series new game mechanics and a different approach to story and development. However, Castlevania had yet to have its finest hour, and along with it, more highs, lows, and surprises over the next two decades that would see the series follow different paths and ultimately evolve into the present day. Many more adventures would come forth for the Belmont clan, as the series ventured further into the darkness. For evil lurks in the darkness. And there comes a time when the power of good is weakened, and men with evil in their hearts pray for the resurrection of the Prince of Darkness. And with each resurrection, his evil power grows stronger.